Welcome, listeners, to another episode of Chris Talks, where I discuss any and everything under the sun. I also give you my views and my opinions on the stories and topics that I discuss. Chris Talks starts right now. Let's get into it. What's up, 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 and welcome to another episode. I am your host with the most, Chris Talks. All right, folks, I hope that you are having a good day because I am having a good one. Well, semi-good. All right, let, let, let's just say semi-good because I had to go to the doctor today, and let me tell you something. People, with these migrants here... Listen, listen, the doctor's office is getting fold, but, hey, you a man, yeah, do it, but welcome to the show, hit the button, Ed, we have Silent Ed on deck, all right, folks, check this out, let's get into these wild stories that um, we have on this episode, I want to thank Ed. For editing um, the intro, thank you so much. Give him a round of applause. I want to thank you so much for doing that because that was a big, 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 big favor. Let's hit him with the air. Yeah. Okay. So I don't give my thanks to you, and I appreciate you so much. Um, you have been a very good friend. During this, um, during this journey. All right, so let's not talk too much about it. All right, folks, let's get into these stories. Okay, so our first story is going to bring us to New York City, where New York City ex-con with over two hundred arrests and an open case in four boroughs was free to lead cops on a wild stolen car chase. How does that happen? I don't understand. It's this uh, man, let me tell you something. This system, people. I don't know about the system. I don't know. I do not know. Excuse my voice if it sounds a little yeah. I am congested. Yeah, allergies, people. Allergies. Just like you get them, I get them. All right, we're going to let Sarah. I'm just going to call her Sarah. Okay, we're not going to call her Sarah. That's uh, kind of weird. We're just going to call her Sarah. We're going to call her Sarah AI. We're going to let our Sarah AI take over. And um, she's going she to... Ed, if you don't stop, if you do not stop, if you don't stop. Silent Ed. Silent Ed. Stop, please. Thank you. We're going to let our AI take over for this story. And um, I'm going to say, before we get too like, deep, deep, deep into it, I am kind of like, how does this work out? How do you an ex-con with over 200 arrests and four open cases? manage to get free this is very (laughs) at most very puzzling let's get into the story all right sarah do what you do take over let's get into it with more than 200 busts on his rap sheet and open criminal cases in four boroughs was free to allegedly lead cops on a wild stolen car chase that left two officers injured last week. The Post has learned, Joshua Padilla, 29, managed to duck jail despite more than a half dozen criminal cases hanging over his head, while on parole following a three-year stint in state prison on a grand larceny conviction. Sources said, it's like he's Teflon, one law enforcement source said, arrest. Jail. Can we Prison, move the mic? None of it means anything to him. That's what we're up against. But the career criminal, described by the source as human carnage on wheels, had his luck run out Tuesday. Finally getting locked up following the driving rampage in which he allegedly tried to evade cops by jumping off a 15-foot overpass and stealing an idling van he eventually crashed into an NYPD cruiser. 
a vehicle with stolen plates entering NYC didn't stop for highway patrol. The NYPD said in a Wednesday post titled, Wanted and Riding Dirty. In all, the troublesome ex-con has 201 prior arrests, not counting sealed cases, dating back to 2006 on charges ranging from forgery, grand larceny and robbery to burglary and reckless endangerment. The sources said, Padilla was hit with a prison sentence of three to six years in 2017 after pleading guilty to grand larceny in a Manhattan case. He was released on parole in 2021, though sources said it hasn't deterred him. He steals cars. He commits robberies, robs people, banks, anything, assaults. One police source said, he behaves like a modern-day outlaw. The source said, adding, he is the revolving door. He operates with impunity. In his latest scrape with the law, Padilla was spotted driving a white 2021 Dodge Charger with stolen license plates on the Henry Hudson Parkway around 11.30 a.m. On Tuesday, according to the criminal complaint against him, police tried to pull over the Charger, which was stolen from Staten Island on August 2, before Padilla allegedly crashed the car and took off running, leaving behind his 23-year-old gal pal. But Padilla allegedly wasn't done, jumping off a 15-foot overpass and stealing another vehicle. A 2014 Dodge Caravan that had been left idling near West 155th Street and Riverside Park, he allegedly then crashed the stolen van into an NYPD patrol car, injuring two cops and taking off on foot again before he was eventually caught. According to the complaint, the cops were treated for minor injuries at Mount Sinai Morningside. Padilla was taken to Columbia University Irving Medical Center with a minor leg injury and charged with two counts of fourth-degree grand larceny and four counts of fourth-degree criminal possession of stolen property. At his arraignment in Manhattan Criminal Court, prosecutors asked that Padilla be held on $35,000 bail. But the judge instead said it at $25,000 in cash or a $50,000 bond. While Padilla remains locked up on Rikers Island in the Manhattan case, he also still faces an open grand larceny charge in the borough from March 11. Records show, he also has open robbery and grand larceny cases in the Bronx stemming from incidents in November and December 2022. According to the records, and he's facing grand larceny and robbery charges in Queens from incidents in March, three of the Brooklyn cases he faced at the time of his Tuesday arrest were for charges including robbery. Burglary and driving with expired plates for incidents in November 2022 and January and February of this year. Those cases have since been dropped. Because the victims were unresponsive. These cases could not be prosecuted. A spokesperson for the Brooklyn District Attorney's Office said in a statement. Padilla still faces an open trespassing case in Brooklyn. His court-appointed lawyer on the Manhattan case could not be reached for comment and his attorney on the Brooklyn cases declined to comment. Uh, all right, listen, oh, man, wow, this is bugged out, bro. This is a bug that one. Uh, all right, listen, I'm sorry about that that noise on that static earlier. I really, really, let me apologize for that. Um, I got a new mic, so, and a new system, so I'm still trying to, um, can figure it out but i will give you as always my view and my opinion on this story in this topic okay so let's get into this guy this I, I mean can like first and foremost can we give this guy a dummy buzzer like seriously the dummy buzzer and he deserves it i'm gonna say he deserves it I'm going to say this guy, 150% truly deserves this. Let's look at the facts here, people. This is an ex-con. All right. This guy has over, over 200 arrests. And he has four open cases. Now, I will say this. I will say this, in the picture, this is a person of melanin color. They have some color to them. So if you want to throw race into the factor, that will not play on this one. Now, why is this guy being constantly 
released and I, I don't understand this all right now me with this system and I'm gonna just keep it a hundred with you just with this system okay no person no person and I'm just being honest no person with 200 prior arrests for anything plus seven warrants for stealing okay just for stealing should be getting out they shouldn't even post bond and I'm just being honest. I'm just keeping it real. They should not even be posting bond. This person should not even post bond. So how this person is slipping constantly. And, and, and that's the question. is How is this person constantly, constantly slipping through the system? Even if they're misdemeanors and minor crimes. I mean, I, only thing I can say is this. Okay, and I, 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 I'm, I'm keeping it real with you. If this guy is getting parking tickets or uh, moving violations, then I'm with you. He could have 500 of those. I mean, 200 is too much, but he could have 500 of those. But if it's for criminal activity, how does that... I mean, <laughs> I mean, New York City. How does that happen? How does that happen to where these guys come in? So many crimes. And God forbid that um, any one of these crimes was murder. And I, I mean, That's why I had to. Add, that's why I took a deep breath at the beginning before I started because I don't understand this. And this guy, he's a foreigner. So how is he getting away with this? Is it because he's not registered? Is it because, um, according to uh, Biden standards, all right, according to Biden standards, he he's in here illegally, so. He's able to get away with all these crimes. I don't know. I don't know. I'm throwing hypothetical uh, scenarios to you because I don't understand how somebody, whether you a U.S. citizen or not, can get away with something like that. I don't understand. Now, I'm a person of, yeah, and I'm going to say I'm a person with melanin. Yeah, I got some melanin to me. Yes, I am of color. So, me as a person of color, when I get pulled over, if I'm driving and I get pulled over, y'all already know how it is. Okay? You already know how it is. <laughs> yeah, you laugh if you want. You already know how it is. Like, these cops, they come up to you, man. And they sit there, they go lights to registration. You be sitting there like, yo, what the f are you talking about? Lights and registration. The first thing you think is like, why the f you pulled me over? You know what I'm saying? And I'm just I'm keeping it real. And then that fear that you might die or shit. You might not even die. They said you might get shot because of the color of your skin. It, it it seeps in. You know what I'm saying? So this is a man of color. This is a man of color. And the NYPD has failed the city of New York. So let's give them a boo. Ooh. All right, and can we give them the buzzer? Yes, because you have failed. 
you have failed the sin. In this situation, you have definitely failed the sin. There's no way this guy should have been floating around. And you know what's so crazy? Ladies and gentlemen, to all my audience, I want to tell you this. This is so crazy. And um, we're not doing a story on it now. I think, did we do a story on this already? I don't know if we did a story on this. The, with the, with the, uh, the guy from Pennsylvania, the murderer. Yeah, the prisoner that's running around, this murderer that's running around Pennsylvania and causing all type of uh, hectic, this Caucasian running around. And yet, they are blowing that up. And I mean, on every media and social media outlet that you can go on, except for this one, probably, they're blowing that up. They got that all around. They got that all around. Yet, this ex-con, this ex-con was able to get out of jail and then lead the cops on a high-speed chase. All right? It almost got away. They caught him, but he almost got away. Like, where is that? Where is that? Where is that blowing up on social media? Okay, that's what I'm saying, people. And this is why part of the reason why I formed this particular channel. Because you have all these things. These people, they are trying to control what you listen to and what you focus on. And yeah, turn it down. T turn it off. Turn it off. I'm just trying to tell y'all this. These people, they are trying to sit there. They are trying to control what you listen to and what you focus on. And don't think that these people do not have soldiers. Why you do that? I don't even care. Don't think these people, soldiers, are not on the internet. They're on the internet. They're on social media. These soldiers, they're on social media. You know, like Candace Owens, that's one of them. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go into it. Because if I go into it, we're going to be here all day. But just for an example, that's one of them. You have to be careful of what you are listening to on these social media platforms, okay? You have to be careful. Have to be careful. <sighs> that's my view. Um, and that's my opinion on this particular show, on this particular story. Yeah, man, how how do you get away like that? I mean, you just got to ask yourself, how does this guy get away? 200 plus. 200 plus crimes. 200 plus crimes. And he's out. <laughs> and he's running around. And now you have this Caucasian from Pennsylvania in the social... Mainstream media and social media is all over it. Yeah, this guy has been out for how long? How long? <laughs> how long? Committed our crimes of assault and robbery. We're not saying murder. He didn't do murder, but... I mean... I mean... I mean... <laughs> he only one step away... He only one step away. All right, that's me, my view and my opinion on that story. Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's get into it, folks. Y'all know how we do. Let's pay them bills right quick. Y'all really know. All the links and everything are right there on your screen. If you like this content and want to hear more of it, 
this particular episode will be uh, shown on YouTube, and you can check this out at Chris Talks 1190 on YouTube. Also, hit that subscribe, like, and comment. Yeah, but did I say it right? Yeah, hit that subscribe, like, <laughs> and share those comments with me because I really like to read them. All right, it may be a little thing to you, but it's a big thing to me. Okay, so let's get into it. Thank you, Ed. I didn't think it went all the way through. I kind of stuttered there. I stopped. I froze. I froze. I froze. I froze. All right, yeah, I froze. Well, yeah, I don't know this, but Ed is getting this. We have a bet here for me to get the um, the intro and all that, cor- like correct or the like this that. So yeah, I've been practicing doing my thing. You know, I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I'm getting better. So I'm all good with that. You know what I mean? So all right, let's get into the second story. Now our second story. Bring us to where Ed. What what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Pull it out. Can you bring that on the big? No, no, not on the small. Bring that on the big screen. Let's big screen it. All right, let's check it out. All right, a Houston woman dies after getting cheap BBL in Mexico. What the heck is BBL? What is a BBL? What? Isn't that like, like that that big large woman thing or what? Whatever. Isn't that like big large women or what? Like big women or whatever. Isn't it big large women? Oh, I'm wrong. So, oh BBL. Oh, oh, Brazilian. But lift. That's what that means? Brazilian butt lift? Is that really what BBL means? Brazilian butt lift? Oh, wow. Really? Didn't know that. Sorry. Um, I'm not Brazilian. And um, I, I, I don't need my butt lifted. So, uh, And I'm not trying to make fun. I'm just saying. My butt does not need to be lifted in any shape or form. Our fashion. All right, so let's get into the second story. Okay, so this is about a Houston, uh, a Houston woman dies after getting a cheap BBL in Mexico. For y'all don't, that don't know, BBL stands for a Brazilian butt lift, which I just said. Ed, I just said that. You know what I mean? Come on, come on, dude. Please, you're playing games. Brazilian butt lift. All right, um, Sarah, 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 my AI, let's get into the story. Let her uh, report this. But you know what I'm saying? Before we get into the story, I want to say one thing. Why do you women need your butt lifted? I don't know. To all of you who start thinking about it, I just want you to ask, answer this one question. Why do you need your butt, your boots? Any of that. Lift it. If it drop, it drop. I mean, come on. It drop, it drop. Come on. No, it happens. It happens. It happens. It's called aging. You know, it's natural. But let's get into the story before I uh, drift off. Let's get into the story. Sarah hit it. BBL procedure led to the death of a Texas woman. Cheyenne Medrano, 31, crossed the border to a clinic in Matamoros, Mexico, yeah. a city yeah. a little over five hours by car from Houston, to have liposuction and a Brazilian butt lift surgery for a low cost of $3,000. She thought that she was overweight and she thought she wasn't beautiful uh, anymore. Down the hall, Nora Whitehead, left. Cheyenne's mother, told Co, she, yeah, was she was my baby, she was my baby. Medrano's death comes at a time when the Centers for Disease Control and Texas health officials have cautioned people to cancel plastic surgeries in Matamoros after at least 17 people who had the surgery came back to the U.S. with fungal meningitis. For $3,000 my daughter paid with her life. 
Nora added, according to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, liposuction surgery in Mexico is around $3,100, while the median cost of the surgery in the United States is $3,637 not including anesthesia and other related expenses the cdc suggests that people who have had plastic surgery including liposuction in matamoros this year seek medical attention and be examined for potential fungal meningitis infection the illness can be life-threatening and detecting it early is necessary for treatment the cdc said symptoms include but are not limited to fever headache nausea and vomiting eight cases have been declared in texas 12 people have died from the surgery in the U.S., and 11 of those deaths occurred in Texas. A BBL is a procedure where surgeons put more fat from the stomach and back to the hips to give a patient the desired, hourglass figure. It rose to prominence in the 2010s as many sought the body shape made famous by stars such as Kim Kardashian and Nicki Minaj. The procedure is known to be risky, with some patients who receive it dying from a fat embolism. When fat used in the transfer gets into the bloodstream and leads to a potentially deadly blood clot. What? Thank you. Turn that down. Thank you. So what? What? Like, that's what I'm feeling right now. I don't, yo, women, 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 oh my goodness, woman of America. Yo, I'm, yo. Like, yo, mom. I don't know what to say. Like, my whole jaw just dropped. I did not know that's... I, yo, I had no idea. That's what they do. No. What is... Yo. Women. Um. <sighs> Man. Can we give her the dummy... No, I just uh, only thing I can say right now is Bruh. like, like, Bruh. are you serious? Are you serious, ladies? I do not know what is driving y'all to this trend to um, like do these things to yourselves, like. I mean, listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. Let me just tell you something. To all my listeners, let me say this. God made you in a specific way. Whether you like it or not, God made you in that way. Some people, y'all don't appreciate how you're created. Some people appreciate how they created, how they look. Some people don't. And it's these people... And a lot of people, um, I would say over the years in Hollywood, they have been doing I, doing these things. I had no, had no idea. Yeah, awkward. Because I had no idea that this is what um, takes place. And these type of transitions to where they are sitting here, they're sucking fat from one part of your body and putting it into another part of your body. Now, I mean, may, may, like maybe medically that might be some like advantage or something because it's not like that. Um, like when they do the fake boobs and they put that, what, what is that stuff called? Like, what is it called? Yeah, me neither. I don't know. I, I don't know. I forgot what it's called. I, I, but it's just, y'all know what it is. Like that. 
that's what I thought it was. Now, it's obviously, uh, these hip hop artists, and I ain't trying to slay them, but I mean, come on. A lot of these hip hop artists and a lot of other people, they, they got these fake foodums, you know what I mean? And they try to um, portray that in their agenda. And we all know that. I mean, that's not nothing new. We all know that. That's something we see all the time. But this, 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 this right here, like this right here, this right here. Yeah, yeah, you see this right here, this right here, this right here. (laughs) Yeah. I did that on purpose, but yeah, let me get serious. This right here, this uh, is something very serious. And this woman, this woman from Houston, this woman from Texas died, died from this. So, ladies, let's be really honest and let's be serious. Do you really want to change your body? Do you really want to go through this type of procedure to where your life is at risk? I mean, really think about it. Most women, they put their life at risk just giving birth. And if you've given birth, I don't know if you're a mother or not. But if you one of my listeners, if you've given birth, then you know that you put your life in danger just birthing a baby. Now, if you was willing to do that, do you are you really willing to lose your life over a, a butt cheek? Like a butt cheek? <laughs> One or two like butt cheeks? Would you do that? Because I won. Can you hit that arrow button again? Yes, that's what I would say. And this woman chose to do that. And ladies and gentlemen, um, if you don't remember, this situation had happened before. I believe it was at, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe there was a situation in 2020 where um, one or two females had went for uh, this same type of procedure and uh, one of the two females had lost their life. So, I mean, if you go down there, it's just risky, period, going down there to um, get something like this done. It's just risky, period. So, to me, I would say this. This is my advice to you women out there. Accept yourself as you are. Love yourself as you are and know God loves you too if he made you in that image and in that, in, in that form. And that's just it. Whether you have kids or not, I'm just saying. Don't take such risks as getting um, Botox or getting, uh, what's this? What's what's the blood, the breast implants, plastic surgery, um, and this, the booty implants. Yeah, the booty, don't, I mean, is your life really worth it? Ask yourself, is your life really worth it? Whether it be legit or it be um, some foreign joint, you know, like Mexico or other countries. A lot of people go to Mexico because Mexico, I I don't know what it is about Mexico. Mexico just seems to do, like, anything. (laughs) Like, anything. Like, 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 I'm dead serious. You need a car? Go to Mexico. You need some bombs? Go to Mexico. You need this? Go to Mexico. You need that? Go to Mexico. You need some bud? Go to Mexico. You need some some coke? Go to Mexico. It's like you can go to Mexico for like I, I'm I, 
Ed, you're laughing, but I'm dead serious. It's like a whole thing with Mexico. I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Everything grows in Mexico. I don't know what's going on. But it's like, everybody seems to go to Mexico for these things. And I'm not saying Mexico is a bad place. They have some really nice tourist sites. They have some really nice hotels. Have I visited most, uh, Mexico? Um, I plead the physic on that. And, you know, I'm going to say, uh, don't get too deep in my business. You know, I, I mean, don't get too deep in my business. You dig. But Mexico is a nice place to visit. I'm not saying it's a bad place. Only thing I'm saying is this. If you choose to visit Mexico, uh, Mexico, I said medical. Yeah, I said medical. If you choose to visit Mexico, be careful. If you choose to travel, let me just say this. If you use, if you choose to travel outside of um, uh, your usual, your country or your usual space or, you know, the usual. Because I don't know what you do. I know what I do. But if you choose to travel outside your usual other countries and stuff like that, um, try to be safe and take extra, extra precaution because things happen, like kidnappings and all those things. We're not going to get too deep in that. Kidnapping, kidnapping and things like that happen. But for this one particular situation, this was a medical situation. And also, we got to understand, people go to Mexico for all type of cheap medicines and things like that. And I mean, do you really know what you're getting? Ask yourself that. Do you really know what you get? For the, for the people that go down there and to all my listeners that do travel down there, I don't know what you do. But do you, is, is your life like really worth it? Depending on your situation. It, it depends on your situation, but is your life really worth it or is it worth that risk? I mean, ask yourself. Like, really ask yourself. All right, listeners. I want to thank y'all um, uh, for tuning in. Um, that's my view and my opinion on that topic. Thanks a lot, Ed. I mean, because really, like, I mean, really, you got to, like, Ed, you got to think about it. She went down there to get butt implants, all right? And end up losing her life. And we should not condone this to her and her family. But you got to think how many different other things, uh, different other products come out of Mexico and how many people travel to Mexico to just receive these type of things. And then Mexico, like, like this is a terrorist state. This is like a terrorist country. You know what I'm saying? They they take American hostages all the time. This is nothing new. They take American hostages all the time. So you go down there for, uh, you go down there for Botox, you might end up being a hostage. You go down there, like you, we, like we, we, within the last what five years, we've been through what? What's this Christian? Um. Uh, uh, this Christian place, they went down there, all right, uh, to help them. What some of the the members of their con- congregation end up in the hostage situation? Turn that down a little bit. Some of uh, their members of their congregation ended up in the hostage situation. You understand what I'm saying? So, it's so many different, that's what I'm saying. It's so many different things, so many plugs that is happening in Mexico and with the army that we have. I'm not saying we should go in there and take over the country. I'm not saying that. 
just with the army that we have and then we um, have several times um, try to give aid to Mexico why is these things happening that's the question that I have you understand what I'm saying you understand what I'm saying that's the question that I have so why was these, even with the border crossing, with them crossing and all the migrants and everything like that crossing the border the way that they are? That's question. But we're not going to get too deep into that. We'll get into that on another show. All right, listeners. Uh, again, that's my view and my opinion on that one. Um, I want to thank everybody for. Uh, I want to thank all my listeners for tuning in. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here with me, and I so, so appreciate that. I so, so appreciate that. I would like to um, hit that. Can we dive that down? All right. On a personal note, I would like to dedicate this particular episode to all the people that were lost in September 11th, because one of my friends was lost in September 11th, and I would like to dedicate this specific episode to all the responders of September 11th, and also um, I would like to dedicate this episode to a friend of mine who I lost recently um, to cancer. Uh, We're going to go into that on a a different episode, but to my homeboy, uh, Jason Cohen, uh, my best friend and uh, best friend of over 20 years, uh, you will will truly be missed. Uh, missed. Um, I want to dedicate this episode to you uh, uh, until we meet again, brother, until we meet again. I want to thank everybody for tuning into this episode. Um, stay blessed and not stress. Uh, until next episode. Peace. Thank you so much for tuning in.